So we're here today to talk about uh, how the Greens are going to reform education. And this is always the case, Greens are pushing for bold new ideas, for meaningful reform, not just little uh, tiny promises that aren't costed out. No, we've done the numbers, we've done the work, and what we're looking to achieve is a way to get property, or to get education taxes off of property and onto corporate and personal income taxes. This is something that has been called for, for groups by years. The Manitoba Chamber of Commerce, the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, and other groups for years have been saying this is something that needs to be done. Why? Because Manitoba is the only province that still allows local school divisions to levy their own school taxes. This results in huge inequities, both inequities in terms of the amount of funding per student, but also inequities in the base, the tax base that different school divisions have. Some school divisions have the ability to raise much more per student there and therefore generally have a lower mill rate, whereas other school divisions have a much less, like a significantly lower tax base upon which to raise money per student, meaning they often have to have a higher mill rate or provide less funding for students. These inequities are bad for the taxpayer and they're bad for students, they're bad for the education system. We're shortchanging everyone, our students, taxpayers alike. What we're looking to do here is a bold proposal. It's going to, as, as I know, remove it off of property. Now think about that. You think, I have, I have beside here my Wolseley candidate, Dave Nickers. And Dave Nickers uh, helps people renovate their homes. One of the challenges with having taxes on property is that it makes a disincentive for people for improving their property. So by removing education taxes off property, we are in, in effect giving people an incentive to improve their properties. Of course, Greens, what are we going to do? We're going to better insulate your houses. We're going to make it so you can help save Green and save the planet at the same time. So there's you know, other aspects that I think should be looked at this. is It's a way to encourage home ownership. Yes, there for a few low-income households, there may be some negative impacts, but that's going to be more than offset by our guaranteed annual income proposal that we've suggested. But for many um, mid, modest, or even low-income people, this is a way towards home ownership. Uh, basically, if it costs you less money to carry your house, it's going to be easier for you to decide to get a house. It's also important, you know, we are talking, and I will get to that in a second, we are talking about a revenue neutral shift. We can't just say we're going to cut a half a billion dollars in education taxes and 150 million in a special levy and just let you know that, oh, that money's just going to disappear and nothing's going to change. Uh, that's for the Manitoba Party and the Progressive Conservative Party to do for you. Um, what we're, gonna, we're proposing is an actual revenue neutral shift. Uh, in which we can fund that. Now I want to kind of give you a thought here. Imagine you're a restaurant owner and you want to start at a restaurant. You've got to pay your education property taxes before you even make a cent of profit. In fact, if you're losing money, you still got to pay your education property taxes or you'll lose the property. So think about how much easier that will make it for businesses to start up, to get themselves going. Now what's the trade-off? Well, there is a trade-off. We're going to get rid of $150 million in a special levy of corporate taxes. Then we're looking at an increase in corporate taxes from 12% to 15.9%. Keep in mind, when Gary Dewar came into power in 1999, corporate taxes were at 17%. We know this is going to have an impact, but we would note it's a revenue neutral shift. Just on the doorstep last night, asked this by Jim, what about companies like Great West Life, who employ a lot of people? Wouldn't this have an impact on them? Yes, but they also own a lot of property in Manitoba. So they're going to save probably almost as much education taxes as they'd see in a shift in corporate taxes. And it's about ability to pay. It's about having people pay when they have the money to pay. Um, in terms of uh, personal uh, taxes, because of our carbon tax, we're going to keep the lowest tax bracket the same. We understand that we need to make sure that our policies don't have regressive impacts. But for the two higher tax brackets, we're looking at 12.75% to 14.14% increase and 17.4% increase to 19.3% increase on the higher tax brackets. So yes, there is a cost. But ultimately what this is, is this is, once again, simplifying our tax system, making it more fair for taxpayers, for students, for teachers, for school divisions. One of the things we think we can do is by funding education through general revenue, we can create a funding model that really is based on a per student basis, thereby making the system much more fair, with some adjustments taken into account for special needs, different geography, etc. So we really think that this is something whose time has come. Uh, you know, agricultural groups certainly for years have been calling for this, given the large land holdings that agricultural producers tend to have. Uh, we've also seen you know, a number of tax credits rolled in by the provincial government, but these tax credits are themselves inefficient and very administratively heavy. So once again, let's simplify the system. Let's move forward with big changes. Let's make taxes fair. Let's get education taxes off of, off of property and onto income and corporate taxes. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I know there's a few that I do need to address, but I want to see if there's any questions here from the folks in the media first. 
uh, I'm, that's well explained to me. Well, there, there was one question that I think came up last night, which is what about the impact on renters? And I think that's something that I also needed to address. Once again, you've got to take a look at our guaranteed annual income proposal for low-income people, a 22% increase in disposable income. So low-income renters under our, you know, you've got to look at our total tax plan, under our total tax plan will be significantly better off. But I'd also note that this will obviously see uh, savings to people that own property that are renting that property out. Well, what we'd hope is that they'll take that money, they'll invest it back in their properties, they'll improve the properties. Maybe they'll lower rents or they'll hold rents at the same rate. Certainly when they're going to the Residential Tenancies Board and they're applying for an above board rent increase, the Residential Tenancies Board takes into account what their actual costs have been. And so obviously if our tax changes result in significant savings for uh, people that are renting out properties, then obviously that's going to be taken into account when they're trying to apply for an above board rent increase. So really, you know, not saying that there won't be any impacts, but the impacts, we've considered that on what the impacts would be on renters and, and what those impacts are going to be, and a number of our other policies address that.